Good evening and welcome to our second cooking class collaboration between Eagle Ridge Resort and Spa and the Galena Territory Association. Today, Executive Chef Randy Hobman and sous chef Joseph Gustafson will be instructing on how to prepare one of our favorites from the Woodlands restaurant, blackened chicken bow tie pasta. Also, we are now taking reservations for Easter brunch in the Woodlands, so don't forget to make your reservation. Hello, I'm Randy Hotman. I'm executive chef. This is Joe Gusta's son, our sous chef. He's been with us for several months now, and we're here to show you some one of our signature dishes from our dinner menu. It's our blackened chicken bow tie um, with fresh mozzarella. On top, Joe's going to do that, and, uh, and then I'm going to be making something later as well. So, go ahead, Joe. Yeah, we're going to start out. Um, we always want to get our pan nice and hot for, for cooking our stuff. Um, we're going to take some onions, some red and green bell peppers. Uh, we're going to take some blackening seasoning. I had some pre-cooked blackened chicken. And then um, we're going to cut some vegetables. We're going to get in the pan. We're going to start making this pasta dish. Um, I'm going to show you how to julienne some vegetables, I guess. And just so we can see that good. Um, I have an onion that's peeled and, and cleaned up. And then um, to julienne, we're just going to go really fine. Our knife skills. I'm going to use my knuckles and, and go, and I can guide my thickness on the onion. So I'm just going to do that slow for you. And so I can get this really thin by using my knuckles, or I can go in it. Oh, and then when I get closer to the end, when I don't feel safe and it's getting wobbly, I can turn this down, and then now I have a solid surface to, to cut with that onion. Slice that. So now we got Julian onions here. I'll put that in the bowl. And then to do our pepper, I'm just going to cut the ends off. I'm going to get a nice side going. And then we don't want to have the vein or the seeds in here. So I'm going to get that out of the way. Get those veins out. Julienne is basically about two inches and by an eighth inch, um, or it could be a little smaller depending on the size of the pepper. So I'm just going to cut those in half, line them up, and then I'm going to, again, use my knuckles as a guide and julienne my peppers. Um, the idea is get the get the method down and your sizing and everything, and then and then speed will come with practice. Safety so, first. Yep, safety first. I have my fingers tucked down underneath so I know where where my fingertips are. They're not out. So if I do hit my fingertips, or well, if I was like this, I could hit my fingertips and get a really bad cut. Here I got my knuckles and they're going to protect me. And I know where the knife is at all times. That's why I keep it up against. If I have it further away, I don't know where that knife is and I don't have enough control. This way I, I have control of where the knife is, and I feel confident what's going to happen. So now I got some Julian red bell peppers. The only ingredients that he's using here is going to go into our blackened chicken bosom pasta. These ends you could use for dicing, so we can utilize all the all the product of the pepper. Not have a lot of waste, since red peppers get a little more expensive and, and such at certain times of year. Right now we're looking forward to spring and all the good vegetables and things that are going to be popping up out of our gardens. Well, we're going to be planting the gardens, but right now asparagus is coming popular. Browns will be in soon. Right, and what we're going to do is we're going to take some olive oil. Pan's nice and hot. Kind of don't want it super smoking hot, but want it enough to get those peppers cooked. So I'm going to add some olive oil. Just kind of smoke it a little bit. I'm going to put some pepper, onion. I'm going to get these started cooking. It'll, it'll slow down the heat on the pan a little bit before I add the garlic. The garlic is minced and it'll cook really quick. So we don't want to burn the garlic. Um, the other thing is about um, to get this some of these vegetables will stop cooking or slow down the cooking process, we can add some liquid. So, um, uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to add a little white wine. Whenever I cook, and the way I was taught, is 
to take, you know, when we use our white wine, you know, you do half for the recipe, half for the chef. So um, it makes our day go by a lot better and well, we cooking a lot more fun. So we're gonna soften these vegetables a little bit. See while I drop the pasta in, cooked pasta, our pasta dip here. So I add the garlic. Since the vegetables are started, I don't want to burn the, burn the garlic. We're going to use some blackened seasoning and what we want to do is when I get those, those uh, spices to, for the flavors to come out. So I'm going to take a teaspoon of uh, blackened seasoning and we'll get that started. Now, now you're going to get the perfume of the, the seasoning going. Again, I'm going to take some of that wine and stop the cooking process, slow it down. I drink some too. <laughs> we add our cooked chicken and heat that up. You know, this could be after, after you, the black ink seasoning has a little, little aroma there, little, little peppers to make it give you some flavor. Yeah, just, just a little more wine. Get that going. He's got some pasta drop. It's, it's warmed up, so now we can add it to the pasta or to the pasta dish. Um, so I'm going to do that. Now the best idea is to cook the pasta fresh, or you know, this is pre-cooked pasta, or it's a pre-made pasta. We're going to cook it, but if you keep it, um, uh, once you drain the pasta, don't rinse it and everything. You'll keep the starches on the pasta, and that will help the, the sauce absorb into the pasta, and that's how you know, we you do, do it in Italy and everything. Yeah. yeah, and it'll soak up, and it'll make it a little starch here. I'm going to add a little fresh herb to it. I got a mixture of thyme, oregano, Parsley here, and then um, so basically I just toss that, and then um, I have some fresh mozzarella, some Italian fresh mozzarella. The mozzarella is basically a real soft cheese. Yeah, it's fr soft and fresh. We're just going to grate that. So um, the best way to do this, is we throw it in the freezer and freeze it. So when you go to grate it, it um, it's a lot easier to grate instead of mushing in your hand. So, so meanwhile, you also want to turn your broiler on on your oven. So finished with the pasta, we actually have a, a salamander that we actually brought our cheese under. But it's best to use that broiler at home in your oven. So the cheese is on top, so when you put it in the oven, it'll basically melt the cheese into it right before you eat it. So, yep, so ideally this cheese is going to melt under our salamander or broiler. And then um, and then that'll be our finished dish, which we will kind of slide right into our pasta bowl. And we put a little more fresh herbs on there. So, so for all of you that have tuned in and have bought in the kit, we are adding a bonus. So usually when you do some cooking, you have a few leftovers. So basically what we come up with is um, a blackened chicken chowder soup. So I'm going to basically take some leftovers that we had and I'm going to make a soup real quick for you guys. While well, Joe's going to actually show us how to make some pasta, fresh pasta. I so basically, again, we're going to start with the hot pot and we're going to saute the vegetables. Again, the recipe will be with your, your kit that you'll be getting for the soup as well, but we're going to send the soup already done. So, um, so anyways, we're going to start with the hot pot. We're going to start with a little butter, clarified butter. Okay. We're also going to make, show you how to make roux as well. Um, so a roux is a, basically a thickening agent. It's half parts flour, half parts um, butter. We're going to start again with a hot pan, a little bit of butter. We're going to add our onions and our peppers, regular green peppers, and saute them until they're translucent or a little soft. You don't want to overdo it. Okay. And a lot of times we're going to make our roux right in this. So basically we're going to saute these, okay, get them soft, and we're going to add the, some more butter to it, four ounces of butter, and we're going to add uh, four ounces of flour. Again, roux is basically equal parts flour and butter. So again, we're going to add the rest of the butter. And we're going to add the flour to make our roux. So again, the roux, the reason you make roux like this instead of just adding flour to a soup, basically when you, you make your roux, you cook it until you get a nice, nice nutty aroma, okay, and make it into a paste. So when you go to add your cream and chicken stock, it basically thickens it, but it evenly disperses the flour throughout the, the whole fluid there. 
cold liquid to your hot roux too so it doesn't break. So we're gonna add our cream. We're gonna add our chicken stock first since it's cold. We're gonna cook that a little bit, okay, until it starts to boil. And then we're gonna turn it down to a simmer. As you see, we're starting to get the paste. This is where the vegetables, so like once this comes up to a simmer and everything, that's where the, the vegetables continue cooking and soften a little more. The flavors blend well together. And this version is a chowder. You can make you can make the starting of this with the, as the, with the roux and the chicken broth, and you can use any kind of broth. You can use veg, vegetable broth, um, any kind of broth, turkey, beef. You can make a beef soup with this too. Um, but basically, in, um, you could use any kind of vegetable. So if you have broccoli, you know, sometimes you can saute the broccoli stems that are diced up small and then save the florets for later and then um, let this cook through. And then uh, you get your flavors blended and your vegetables cooked. And then you can add, like, the end, would, if, you, if it was broccoli, you can put broccoli florets in there. You could do this with cauliflower, you could do it with mushrooms, uh, whichever. And then, but this one's a little hardier version. We're using our leftover ingredients uh, from our pasta, and this way we have a little blackened seasoning in there too. A little salt and pepper yep. and, to um, taste. So we're gonna take some cooked, right now we're gonna take some cooked uh, potatoes, which I did ahead of time, add them as well. So that could be a leftover baked potato also. And now you, now you, got, you don't know what to do with that. You couldn't eat it all the night before, but now we're turning it into a soup, a nice chowder. So we actually have some corn as well and then our chicken. We're gonna add our blackening, seasoning last. So you can actually take and make this as spicy as you want. So if you wanna add a little time and try it and then uh, kinda of go from there. It's always easy to add, add flavor, but it's hard to take it out. So it, and then we'll garnish it off with a little bit of um, uh, green scallions that we've also chopped as well. So we kind of showed you how to make a soup in five minutes, but um, you do want to let it simmer and, and cook a little longer to let all those flavors come together. But it's a quick, simple way. Once you learn the basics of the roux and then how to make the cream-based soup, which we just showed you, again, it can be changed to anything that you want. Um, any kind of vegetable you have around the house, something to use up. Um, and then you could put cheese in here if you wanted to. You can add chicken, you get turkey, any kind of leftover meats that you had. This is what, you know, you add your vegetables and now you made your own kind of soup. It could be a, this could be a loaded baked potato soup even, you know, where you put all the, some bacon in there and you put sour cheese. cream and cheese and those different kinds of toppings. Um, we might, we just had celebrated uh, St. Patrick's Day, we might make a cream of Reuben soup. And we're gonna use, instead of sauerkraut, we'll use fresh cabbage. And then we'll make like a cream of cabbage soup with corned beef. We'll use the corned beef broth um, to, to enhance our, our soup flavor for the corned beef. And, and then we can garnish it with some toasted rye bread croutons and then top it with some Swiss cheese. And that makes a great cream of Reuben soup. One thing I'm gonna show you how to make some fresh pasta. And then this will enhance our pasta dish in a lot of different ways and it can be made in all kinds of different shapes and sizes and, and whatever. Um, and then it, we'll show you how to cook it real quick. And, and po fresh pasta only takes about three minutes to cook. You always want to have some salted water. You want to kind of layer your flavors in everything we do. Um, and I'm going to have a little salt in here, olive oil, and basically eggs, fresh eggs. So I'm going to crack uh, some eggs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I only need, um, I'm going to take six egg yolks. I'm going to take one egg to make this pasta dough. So I'm going to crack some, whoops, crack some eggs. I'm going to get just the egg yolks part, parts in there. I can use my egg whites for a different purpose. I can make anything from egg white omelets to uh, meringues, you know, for desserts and such. And I can make angel food cake too. So we can use those for something else. But I, I do need the, the viscosity of the egg white for, or of one egg 
to make this pasta dough come together a little better. So I got six egg yolks, and we'll provide you with this recipe also. So I got full egg there. Slide that stuff over. I'm going to add a little olive oil, about a tablespoon or so. I'm going to add about a tablespoon of milk. I'm going to mix that together. That's my liquid for the, for the, for the dough. And we're going to put it in the food processor just to expedite the process. To show you how easy that is. I'm going to add a little, I got, uh, so actually here I got my uh, flour. I got one and three quarter cups of flour. I'm going to put some salt in there for flavor. Mix that up. Another way to do this is I had this in the bowl. We can make a well and I could, I could put the egg yolk mixture right in here and then I would slowly stir that, those eggs to incorporate the flour and then um, to make my dough. It just takes a little bit longer and it ends up in the same result as a food processor kind of. I'm just trying to show you a quick way to do it. So then I'm just going to... Try to get our... It's going to get a little coarse meal effect kind of going. We might want to add just a little bit of liquid to it. Maybe a little more olive oil. Just to get that dough to start to come to a ball. Sometimes the food processor just takes, I mean, now it looks like it's sometimes it's like pulsated. You're right. I just flip it like that. And then this is going to form a ball. See how it's getting tight? It just doesn't look it, like it from the food processor. And it does need some kneading. So we do want a little extra flour just to help that along so it doesn't stick so much. Ideally, you want to knead this dough about five minutes or so, make it nice and smooth. It does just, you know, you just push it down and keep it together. It does, you don't have to add a lot more flour, you just want to keep it so it's not getting real sticky. So I just added a little flour so it doesn't stick to the board so much. Um, we want to keep this dough somewhat moist. It does need to be kneaded so it blends everything together. Creates a little bit of gluten. You just kind of push it through your hands and push it down on the table. It takes about five minutes or so. And then it'll start to come form a nice ball. And then basically now we gave this thing a lot of exercise. Just, so now we need it to take a rest. So we're gonna rest, let it rest for about 30 minutes. We're gonna make sure it's covered in plastic. And then I'll- The refrigerator or sitting out? Yeah, we put it in the refrigerator, 30 minutes. Now I got some other dough and I had this refrigerated. It's nice and pliable. Looks really smooth and nice. Now I got a pasta machine here. Not everyone has a pasta machine, but um, you know, you could do, roll this out thinly and then by a pasta machine makes it go so much easier. Cuts it as well. Right. So to use the pasta machine, we just want to sprinkle it with a little bit of flour. A nice dry board. Get so it's long enough, and actually, we only need about half of it to start going at a time. It's going to stretch out to quite a bit. And then we're just going to put it on. There's different settings on here, and this is on setting one. When I get that started, and then we just roll it right through. Yeah. So I ran it through once. Now you fold it in half a little bit so it gets a little wider. I'm still on my first um, notch here. It's a little thicker. Just want to get that started so it'll start to pull through. It's always good to have two people. Could turn into a nice family process. Um, I'm going to move it to the second uh, notch just as long as it's taken. Sometimes you might have to do it through the first notch. Um, just to get it going a little more. And then hopefully we can do this one, two, three, right? 
Yeah, so there's there's about six notches on here. It depends how thick you want and what kind of pasta you're making. Um, you do want to have it relatively thin. At this point with this, we have some nice sheets. We could turn this into a lasagna right now. See how this is getting a little, little tighter and a little thinner. If it starts to get too thin, we might want to back down on the, on the number to go back to our thicker setting. And we just roll that through. So that's a good thinness. See how long it got? So depending on what we want to do, we can always cut this in, in smaller things, but sometimes it's kind of fun to have, if you have your family members, oh look, we got a long sheet of pasta. So um, now we can take the handle off. I'm going to make a little fettuccine. So now I can do it on this setting. We do want to have just enough flour to coat um, so it doesn't stick in the machine or whatever. Put a little flour in there. We can make some different kinds. And um, I'm just going to take, take a sheet here. And then, let's see, I'm going to get that started. This is basically cutting it into fettuccine. Right. Homemade fettuccine, just like that. Just like mama used to make. Actually, my mother was Italian and we did make a lot of pasta all the time. Um, I'll just show you that, yeah, we'll make some yeah, angel hair. And So really in like 15 minutes, well, or, or I guess within an hour, you can have some nice fresh pasta to cook up. Another, another thing what I was doing, um, like since we had that was a bow tie pasta over there, we can make our own bow tie pasta. So we use a knife, I'm gonna cut it in pieces, and then I'm gonna cut it in little rectangles. And to make bow tie pasta, yeah, then now we just take our fingers in the middle and we get a cr crimp there. And then we kind of make our own bow tie pasta. And then this one you want to let it dry out a little bit just so it sets a little air dry sets up yeah a little air dry you want to have enough flour so this uh pasta you know separates and whatever you can and you can put this back in the refrigerator use it as needed you just don't want it to start thicken or sticking together so you want to keep it well floured this pasta will only take a couple seconds to cook well it'll take about three minutes to cook so we just drop that right in there one of it is I like to just take fresh olive oil, some fresh garlic, and, and some butter. And butter's gonna be my finishing. So when I add fresh butter at the end, it's gonna make it a little creamier, and it's gonna uh, go onto this pasta and just give a little flavor. And, but, but butter will melt, or can burn too. It's got a little low heat point. So we're gonna start out with a little olive oil. I'm gonna saute my, garlic which is right here yeah and he's putting some fettuccine in there too which we'll scoop out a little bow tie yeah a couple bow ties and we'll just show you a few different ways to make this um and it just makes a great fresh meal now if i had that fresh asparagus you put a little blanche fresh asparagus if we were able to get some mushrooms or just you know Buy some from the store, and that would be great. We're gonna saute our garlic. Sometimes we can add, you know, a little crushed red chili if you like a little bit of spice. Um, we got salt and pepper here. So I just wanna get my garlic a little toasted, lightly brown. Oh, it's smelling so good in here, right? I mean, this whole room. I used to be the chef of Italian restaurant sometimes, it, like, just before the restaurant would open, I put some garlic in a pan, run through the dining room, and then and then go back in. And when people walk in, you know, they smell that garlic and they just, you know, their mouth starts watering. And they're thinking pasta and just that good Italian food. And then, like when you got fresh pasta here, it's just incredible. So I got that garlic starting to get golden brown. Doesn't take long, we don't want it to burn. So our pasta's about done. 
We're going to add some fresh butter. This is going to add to the creaminess. And then we're going to take some salt and pepper. It's also going to stop that garlic from, from cooking or burning. Garlic burns fast, so you gotta be careful. Right. When heating it up. So we got that pasta, it came to a boil. It's nice and tender, al dente. And then we're gonna add that right in it here. Now I got some fresh herbs here. And then this is just an awesome dish right now. I mean, just simple salt, pepper, fresh pasta, and then just like mama used to make. Here we go, a little fresh Parmesan. We could do that fresh mozzarella, you know, right on top. And it's just a nice, light, easy spring meal to make happen. There we go. Slide that over, boom. Fresh cheese. Okay, it's like an incredible dish. You know, we do have some of that fettuccine version here. I'll just add that to the pan. We'll show you how that comes about. You know, but fresh buttered noodles. I mean, kids love it. I'm just adding a little pepper there. And then we're showing you kind of what, what our fresh comes out to be. It's not as, doesn't hold the shape as well as, as the pre-made stuff. But the thing is, when you can say, oh, I made my own pasta, this is it. And then every pasta shape has a different uh, reason for, for how to do it, for what sauce to go with it a little bit. Like linguine goes good with uh, seafood. Um, fettuccine, it goes good with the cream sauce and it holds that. Or it goes good with a, a like a, a beef stew kind of thing. Um, we call it sugo de mali, like sugo is what it says in Italian. So, so it, there's a lot of pasta to go with your meat and meat gravy. Um, spaghetti obviously goes great with, you know, meat sauce or marinara. And then you got the shorter two pastas that also lend themselves well to get those flavors inside the pasta tubes um, of a sauce, like a tomato cream sauce or such. Um, it does go well with like a, a big bolognese sauce. And then you it's got your macaroni much, and cheese, of course. Yeah, pretty much all pastas are the same. They're just different shapes. Different shapes to hold the different types of sauces and everything on. But this is a fettuccine. And then we got our bow tie. Ideally, if you let this, this bow tie, um, you know, dry out a little more and, and absorb the thing, it's not gonna break apart uh, for the... So this one, it, didn't hold its shape as good, but um, if you did let it set and rest for a bit, it'll hold its shape. And there's our fettuccine. Again, just with simple simple things around the house, ingredients that you have in your refrigerator, some Jesus. fresh stuff from the garden, you know, some great cheese. I mean, that's just what makes everything good, simple. But when you taste this, you know, the texture is nice, soft, tender, and then um, it's fresh tasting. And then that's a, that's a bunch of different kinds of pasta dishes here. And it doesn't take a whole lot of time to make. And then it takes very little time to cook. So that's what I like about Italian food. And that's what we're gonna to bring to you um, this spring, this summer, you know, at the Woodlands restaurant in Eagle Ridge.